first time I've ever heard of Eric Costin. You know what? It was probably, yeah, right. Like, that was way later, I know. Like, there's so much of Eric before that I never really realized. But, like, yeah, right. And that whole video coming out was probably, like, the first time I've ever heard of him. You know, and I saw the trailer, and it was him yelling at some kid. <laughs> and I knew he was the best. You know, Eric Costin having last part and just being that dude at the time is was crazy. He Nolly backs and nose went arc of it. I learned a Nolly backs and nose went like two weeks ago. And for him to do it at Arco like two thousand three <laughs> that is crazy. It's always fun to watch Eric at a video deadline because that's when he starts like, fuck this, I'm doing this, we're getting tricks. You know, tray flip, nose blunt slide, then yeah, right. It's hour and a half away, Santa Barbara, and we just drove up right to get that trick. And that's what he did. He drove up there at night, lit it up, got it, and came home. <laughs> and to me, that is, you know, that, that, that's like a Michael Jordan moment. Like, he literally took over the game and won it. He was just killing stuff. I remember going to, like, that big hub ledge in Philly, and you just destroyed that thing. 180 nose grind, back lip, like did all that stuff over that. And then, like when he went out to Japan and skated that white hub and just murdered that thing and did a ton of shit on that. He did so many tricks on this hub that one night. And this whole trip, it was him, McCrank, and Rodrigo, and Rodrigo got sick. And literally him and McCrank were like just two fucking wild dogs doing demos and skating street. They're very tight at that point. Eric and Rick McCrank. That was a good combo. Because Rick is like just like Eric. He's super good, tranny, rail, gap, whatever. And I think McCrank, being like a bigger rail skater at that time, he really pushed Eric to like start doing like some bigger rails and bigger gaps. And like in that yeah right thing, you've seen them feeding off each other. I like the Rick McCrank and Eric Costin better than the guy Mariano Eric Costin. <laughs> My opinion. You were dragging him down. I was dragging Eric down and Rick brought him up. You were like, let's go deep Christine. <laughs> I'm trying to get Eric to bomb walls. McCrank's getting him to the double kinks. <laughs> the early, early 2000 era of Eric, he was unstoppable. Dudes are in their prime and there's certain time where all that stuff works and like that was like his chunk right there where he was just killing it. Back then all that stuff came like so quick but like now it's like forget it. Guys are, like checking the wind, fucking yeah, every say? distraction, like every distraction in the world it's like crazy now. 2001 Reader's Choice Award, best all around skater. You know, now it's pretty high pressure where, you know, when we started it was pretty fun. Now it's like a, a virus or a, some antibiotic. <laughs> you know, it, it only it works for so long and then the virus gets stronger. <laughs> that's, how I, yeah. that's how I look at it. Like, guys, okay, that trick was gnarly. Now it's not gnarly. Now it's just like another trick in the bag. That's one thing I've felt sorry for him about is just like seeing how much pressure I would assume he puts on himself oh, and he feels that everyone's expecting like I don't even want to have that for filming fully flared did he have a lot of the pressure that some of the other dudes talked about or yeah I feel like he did because he was the guy that like came in and really was like the final piece of the puzzle where everybody was like, oh my God, like, okay, this is gonna be ridiculous. Like the guy thing was already in motion. You know, everything else had been going for so long and then it's like, oh, here comes this dude to like ice the whole thing. So I'm sure he felt the pressure to be like, well, everybody's ex gonna expect me to have like the la like a last part caliber part and then having a year and a half, maybe fucking a little bit longer than that at best to do it. I'm sure it wasn't the most pleasurable thing for him. A lot of people thought that you kind of came in just to film the part and that the plan was to leave anyway, or? <laughs> That's what I heard. That's pretty absurd to think that I would come in just to, to film a part and then leave. Time-wise, you just don't have that kind of luxury in life to be just bouncing around. The thing is, when Lakai started, you know, it had been a long time at S, my contract was up and I wanted to feel like sort of secure. 
at where I was gonna, you know, end up for the, uh, at that point on, I wanted to have like some sort of stake in a company, at a, a brand that I, you know, back and believe in. And, and that's what I thought. And uh, we had come out with like a pretty fucking insane video, fully flared. You know, probably one of the, the best marketing tools a brand could come up with. You know what I mean? Yeah. I guess it didn't translate. His business manager unearthed some stuff that was going on that I think people either just didn't take the time to realize or were just too busy that they didn't, you know what I mean? They didn't have the time to deal with it previous to that, but that really was the point where everybody was like, okay, some shit's going on here that's probably not that great for the brand. That sucked. He just came on at a shitty time and um, he quit. It really affected me and him in our relationship, and you know, you always hear business and friends, and it sucked. Yeah. You know, if I were to do it all over again, man, I would never, I would have fucking never have done it. You know, Rick and the girl guys, those guys, like, we're so close, and they're family to me, literally, like, we're just so close. So I always wanted to do something with them, and for it to not work out is really hard to deal with. I didn't know what else to do. I sort of had to take us uh, just the, the, the choice of making a, a kind of a life decision <laughs> of like having to I, I gotta go and do what's best for me did you know you were gonna go to nike or were you no when i left the kai no i left knowing i'm just gonna go out and like free agent style i mean if you asked me five years earlier i'd have been like fuck no fuck those dudes fuck that place fuck that no i don't fucking trust them you remember the fucking that first run they did it sucked but after time, seeing like how they run things and what they do and how they get behind their team, and it's crazy what's how far it's come along in skateboarding. Now it's like skateboarding is this huge responsibility in Nike. You know what I mean? Like that we all have. You know, now looking back, all my shoes that I designed, you know, I copied Nikes. It's all these Jordans and Nikes. And now you can make a shoe that, like, someone else is going to copy? Hopefully, that's like... You're, like, the starting point? Yeah. A legitimate spot. It's a great spot. And when he does something, he kind of gets involved in it to the fullest. Like, four-star girl, like, Nike whatever sponsors he has, he kind of like fully gets into it. And you know, now that he's like doing Oakley stuff, has a lot of responsibilities, but he's handling it well and he's had like a great career. And if I've ever learned anything from him, it's like, yeah, you know what I mean? You gotta work for it. You, sh the shit doesn't just like come to you. You gotta like work hard towards something and just, uh, just try to do it right. And I think that's what he's done. He's done a great job at it. There's a lot of people that think that he was just a great skateboarder and everything just fell into his lap. But that's not true. Like, Eric worked, like, really hard. He battled for his stuff, you know what I mean? Like, he put together, like, over 15 video parts, like, bangers, you know what I mean? Like, I don't need another Costin banger video part to know that he's, like, amazing. You know what I mean? I have tons of that. It makes me happy to see him with his family, like, doing good and, like, being like almost like the Michael Jordan of our industry. And I can say that and like, you know, a lot of people will back that. <laughs> and this is Finn. Hey. Yeah? You want, to, you want me to help you on your skateboard? Yeah. Okay. I have to like tighten our wheels up. I tighten the wheels up okay. too. But still it's like, I gotta tight, crank them even more. You know, us at Girl and just skateboarding in general, we've always looked to Eric to show us the way. And that's why he is Eric Austin. Take your passy out when you skate. Safer. It goes back and forth. It does. It goes back and forth. Have you seen your dad skate? She saw me at a contest. I think it was a, like a Maloof or something, but she was there and she was following me the whole way, I guess, and like laughing and like tripping out. I don't think she could even talk then. That's <laughs> so sick. Wee. Wee. Sketchy. Stay on your knees. Whoa. Stay on your knees, June.